What's up, Raging Nation? How's it going? This is Alex Yu, and you're watching the Rage Ronin Review. I got a review for you. Last night and the night before that, I watched Avengers Age of Ultron, and it is one of my most highly anticipated films of 2015. It is also the film that kicks off the summer movie season of this year. This is my most favorite time of the year. Can you believe it? It is already May 1st, 2015. Time flies. And from May 1st till the end of August, we are getting the biggest summer blockbusters. From dinosaurs to robots to superheroes and to a, a movie about a big earthquake. We're getting them all and all the fun popcorn flicks come out at this time. So that's why I love this time of the year. And well, I can't think of a better way to start off the summer movie season than with the biggest and most highly anticipated superhero sequel of all time. All right, well, here's my review. And before I tell you about how I feel, I should let you know that this is a spoiler free review. There are no spoilers in this video, so you don't have to worry about it if you haven't seen the movie, all right? I'll be posting a spoiler-filled discussion video later on where I'm gonna talk about specific things that I liked about the film and also things that I thought could have been improved, but for now, this is a spoiler-free review, all right? Well, let's start off with the review and I will let you know first that Joss Whedon is, of course, back to direct and he has a mission and it's a very, very demanding mission and that is to bring us an Avengers sequel that is better and bigger than the original. The original came out three years ago in 2012, so there's a lot of anticipation building up to this film. It's been three years, he gave us a big superhero film, all right, a superhero team film, and in the last three years, he, uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe gave us a bunch of solo films to build up to it. So obviously, there's a lot of expectations, there's huge expectations, as well as a lot of anticipation. So, does the sequel live up to its predecessor or is the sequel better than its predecessor? I'm going to let you know my verdict at the end of this video. So let's just talk about it, all right? Um, with regards to the, the story, it is about Ultron. As the title suggests, it is the age of Ultron, which I think is a bit of a silly title because it really isn't the age of Ultron. It's more like the moment of Ultron. <laughs> But um, Ultron is the bad guy. He's the big bad guy. And while in the first Avengers they dealt with a god and aliens, well, they're going to deal with a very, very intelligent AI in the form and in the name of Ultron. And Ultron is a creation of Tony Stark. He's part of the um, Iron Legion program. And then Ultron is a... a I guess the next level up and the Iron Legion program is is just an, an attempt by Tony Stark to just protect the world without the help of the Avengers. Just create a legion of um, you know Iron Man suits that can protect the world on their own through artificial intelligence. And well, you know what happens when you have really, really smart AI. Well, it manifests itself into something that is self-aware and starts questioning himself and then of course has their own motives. And that is of course world domination as usual how original <laughs> but anyways yeah it's it's straight off the pages of the comics so this is what ultron is really about all right the gang is all back and the gang is back and they're better than ever everybody that you loved from the originals and all the new and all and a bunch a couple of new characters that were introduced are here and that is really really great because it's so great to see them together, all the chemistry that they have together, it's fantastic. And when you watch these guys on screen, you know they're having fun. And when you see they're having fun, you enjoy it. And that's what I love about this group of great actors, but also great and well-written characters, all right? So we got the, the original team back. We got a couple of new additions. Aaron Taylor Johnson plays uh, 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 Pietro Maximoff. And also um, Elizabeth Olsen plays... Um, her twin, his twin sister, um, Wanda Maximoff. And of course, James Spader, the great James Spader, plays Ultron, okay? And then there's a couple of um, um, additions. I wouldn't say they're additions to the team per se, but at least there's a couple of uh, new supporting cast members and as well as a couple of familiar faces, which I'm not going to spoil. But I gotta say that the entire cast was great. Okay, the entire the entire cra cast crass brought their A game. Um, I might have to say that there is always a weak link, and if I had to say who's the weak link, I would have to say it's the the 
the actors who played twins, Elizabeth Olsen and, um, and Aaron Taylor Johnson. And the main reason why is because uh, they don't give them a whole lot of screen time. I mean, they are supporting cast members. They're new. They're the new kids on the block. And uh, the, that Russian accent, that fake Russian accent wasn't believable. And it was a little bit distracting. But other than that, I didn't have a whole bunch of problems with them. Okay, um, this movie is great. Okay, there's a lot of great moments in this movie. A lot of a lot of uh, great fanboy moments, and a lot of moments that um, re really make the comic book fans get goosebumps, just like I did. Because the movie starts off with a bang. Okay, as soon as it opens, it is like, whoa! Like you're really watching some great visuals, and also when you're watching these visuals happen, okay. You, you can't help but think about that, okay, there's a, there's a bigger picture going on here. It looks really cool, you're enjoying the action, but you see something going on, and that is the Avengers working as a team, okay? What was so great about the first one is that you see the team come together, you see the progression, and they start off as a team. Like, you really see the communication going back and forth, and they work together physically, uh, um, they're... They're always uh, uh, talking about uh, you know their next plan, so that is really really great. And it starts off with a bang. And as soon as I like watched the opening sequence, I was thinking to myself, I'm really gonna like this movie. I mean, if this is gonna be how it is, I'm really really gonna like this movie. So very very awesome. Okay, and of course that comes with great chemistry. There's a lot of chemistry in this movie between the characters. I thought that it was very well written, and Joss Whedon did a great job with really really exploring that. Now speaking of the characters and their chemistry, we get to see a bunch of new developments, which is great. Okay, we get to see sides of these characters that we've never seen before and we get to see more backstory for example um um okay i'm i'm not going to spoil anything but i'll just say that there's a lot of focus on black widow and hawkeye's character okay i see that there's they bring in some more emotion to it they brought in uh, new developments they brought in uh, the history of their characters and we see a little bit of a darker side and uh, also a little bit of hidden agenda okay so that is really really cool um as for Joss Whedon and uh, his direction, a lot of, lot of uh, great pacing, all right? He, he told a story in a way which kept it never a dull moment. Every little piece of dialogue, every little piece of action, every, um, every, just, just, um, every, everything, okay? I liked a lot of things about this movie. Uh, the humor was on point. A lot of people had some complaints about the humor, how they thought it was too much. I loved it. It made the movie fun and, and funny. And there's, and, and one of those fun moments is, of course, the visuals, the actions, Hulkbuster, okay? You gotta, you gotta bring in Hulkbuster, okay? Hulkbuster obviously means that he's here to bust Hulk. And that scene is, it exceeded my expectations. That scene alone exceeded my expectations. I thought it was just going to be full-on brawl, punch, 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 you know, superhero, bam, bam, ouch, bang, biff, you know, that kind of thing. But it was way more than that. And that really just blew my mind. It was a lot of fun. Um, and I love the fact that uh, even though Tony Stark and, and uh, Bruce Banner had their moment to shine, like in the Hulkbuster moment, they do, a, uh, Joss Whedon does a good job at balancing the characters. All right, we saw a lot of these characters at the first movie, Avengers, but now we're seeing more of this other bunch of characters that we didn't, that we didn't see a whole lot of in the first film. So he really, really um, had a very, very, I would, I'd have to say it was a challenging task, a very challenging task to balance the characters, um, not only in just screen time, but, but also in their level of significance, okay? So that is done really, really well. Um, there are... Uh, there are a lot of Easter eggs in this movie. <laughs> if you really, really pay attention, if you know, if you are a hardcore fan, you will know that there's a lot of uh, these Easter eggs put in here and here, here and there. And I love that attention to detail that Joss Whedon puts because it's not just for the sake of putting it there. It's also part of the story. You just got to pay attention to it. It's in the dialogue. It's in the visuals. It's in the, um, uh, the, the little things that they do and the little things they mention. So, um, it is, um, it, it really, um, you know, it really, really, um, makes the fans happy, like myself, especially when they put those nods to the previous films, and also, um, little mentions of what could happen next in the future films, 
all right so that is very very cool that they did that and um and i really don't think it's all fan service a lot of people think that oh they're just putting this in for you know fan service they're putting it in for the sake of putting it in i don't think so okay joss whedon he knows comic books he knows the stories he knows the characters and because of that he puts things in as they are appropriate okay even that stanley cameo okay that was awesome i loved it okay so i've mentioned a lot of things that i liked about this movie you know, no movie is perfect. Some movies are perfect, some movies are near perfect, but not a whole lot of them are really that perfect, okay? This movie doesn't come without flaws, and I'm going to tell you about them, okay? Without getting into specifics. All right, now, remember how I said that uh, this film starts off uh, with, at, with a bang, okay? And I love how the characters felt like they're working as a team. Well, it feels less like a team as a movie progresses. And I know that's part of the story, but I think that kind of makes the Avengers Assemble concept a bit weaker when they start doing their own things, all right? There are a lot of subplots going on, and I really don't mind the subplots, but the fact is that there's going to be some subplots that are weaker than others, all right? Specifically, one or two of them. And it involves a little bit of chemistry between some characters that I'm not going to mention, and those uh that little bit of chemistry and i'm sure that you know what i'm talking about just feels awkward and out of place at no point in time in the comics did these two characters ever have a thing you know what i'm saying so and and and, and the reason why i feel that it feels out of place is not because that it never happened in the comics it's because it just doesn't feel it it needs to be there i understand why joss whedon did it to you know why I decided to include that in but I felt that it just felt awkward and it didn't it didn't really feel that it was needed to progress the movie if they took out that element of the film I really feel that it would still be the same movie so that little subplot I felt didn't uh, didn't work for me um now like I said before when they work as a team and when they're on on the screen together they are brilliant okay so but but when they're doing their own things, some subplots are more stronger than others, okay? As a matter of fact, I felt that one of the subplots was just there just to set up the next film, okay? And I felt that that feels the most disconnected subplot of them all, all right? But like I said, I understand I understand why Joss Whedon decided to put that in there, um, but um, it just felt like it was just there for the sake of the other films, Okay, so that was a little bit, um, that was a little bit of a, a, a weak spot for me. It didn't make the, the film feel stronger by having it there, all right? Um, now, let's talk about Ultron, okay? Did Ultron, a big bad villain, like a, a really, really big bad villain in the Marvel Universe, like the comics, did he live up to expectation? First of all, I'll tell you that James Spader did an excellent and phenomenal job. Joss Whedon said that the only the only one in mind is is uh, James Spader. It had to be James Spader. And he's absolutely correct. It had to be James Spader. I can't think of any other actor that could have done uh, Ultron better. Now, James Spader's performance was on point and was excellent. It was Joss Whedon's uh, direction and what he planned to do with the Ultron character that I felt was a little bit weak. Okay, uh, you know what? I'm sorry to say it, but Ultron could have been a better villain had had he been i guess stronger not just physically but like stronger as a presence okay um he just he, he didn't feel menacing enough he didn't feel intimidating enough he he felt that um he felt that he was a um he was naked without his army he had to have his his army with him okay and which leads me to talk about um about his uh his, the third act of the film okay the third act of the film is where I felt was the weakest of the entire movie. Now, why do I feel that way? It's because in the first film, the movie got progressively better and better and better with an explosive final act, okay? It felt like Joss Whedon did the complete opposite. He gave us his bag of tricks at the very, very beginning of the movie. He gave us his best tricks, his best illusions, his best performance at the beginning to the middle, and once we get to the once we get to the final act of the film, which is the third act, the final climactic battle, I felt that he ran out of steam, he ran out of fuel, he ran out of tricks. There was nothing left in his bag, and he gave us something quite formulaic, and that is 
Let's save the world. And it's a very, very specific formula. Let's get the, the citizens and the, the, the innocent people to safety. Let's, you know, let's protect them. And afterwards, let's take care of all the bad guys. Let's take care of all the armies, okay? Then, then, um, then afterwards, we'll take, up, take out the main bad guy. Okay, it's a very, very formulaic thing. It's something we've already seen in the first film, all right? They had to deal with Loki and the Chitari army. Well, now we're dealing with Ultron and his army of robots, which are very, very much like... Um, uh, what do you call it? Feder Trade Federation battle droids. Jed Jedi cut them up like butter. Okay, these are not uh, like formidable opponents. They are very easily killed. All right, they they are they they shatter upon the first hit. Okay, and Ultron is really naked without his army of minions. So, which makes the third act very very formulaic. It's just about Avengers going up against an army, which we've seen before and which was done a lot better in the um, in the first film. So, I'm gonna have to say that the third act was kind of weak, and it it was um it was kind of a you know it was it was a lot of fun visually and it's very exciting. But uh, that's all it was. It didn't have a whole lot of depth to it, all right? And I felt that the movie was, was, was very, very awesome. Everything in the first and second act was fantastic, okay? But by the time we got to the third act, it just felt like we were just watching things happen. But, I mean, I felt like I was just watching things happen and watching them fight without any real true, um, true, true uh, uh, feelings of, like, how this is... How, how, how this is supposed to be any better than the um, than than the rest of the movie all right so yeah that doesn't really I mean it felt really formulaic okay to be completely honest um, and I think it would have been better had there been more development with Ultron's character okay it really all comes down to the title character it is after all called age of Ultron and if if Ultron isn't developed uh, in a, in um I guess substantially, you know then and and it, you know, I guess the the final act where the 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 Avengers need to fight him is it can fall apart easily. And when you watch this film, you'll see what I mean when when it comes down to uh, um, taking him out. Okay, it, it really doesn't mean a whole lot, and it doesn't have that oomph. You know when 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 they uh, when they make the attempt to take him out. So that is really really um, that's really unfortunate. <laughs> But still, I still like this movie a lot. I like this movie a lot uh, because it just has a lot of great moments. And I'll, I also like the way it ended. Joss Whedon, he, he ended the movie in a very, very, I guess, a very, very uh, a smart way. I say it's a smart way because even though the, the final act of the film, the climactic battle, wasn't as... Um, wasn't as great as I would have expected. I felt that the way he closed it off was perfect. All right, that's a lasting impression that it left on us. And because of that, I think that this film is still a very, very great film. All right, is it better than the first one? No, it's not, but it's still a fantastic film. Joss Whedon had a very, very demanding task in bringing us a bigger and better Avengers movie. He, he and I, I believe that he did as best as he could and what he gave us is a very very entertaining ride and because of that I'm giving it an 8.5 out of 10 okay I gave the first Avengers a 9.75 out of 10 a near perfect film okay 8.5 out of 10 is for Avengers Age of Ultron I felt that things could have been better specifically the third act of the film the entire third act of the film and it would have been better if they had done one thing and that is uh, do something better with the Ultron character. That's all they had to do. Had the Ultron character been handled a little bit better, then the third act would have could have been a lot better. All right, but um, but uh, it was great. It was great. I enjoyed it. And I think you should go watch it. IMAX 3D, if available in your city, go check it out and have a good time. This is the uh, this is a, a really great movie, and I think that if you are a Marvel fan, you will enjoy a lot of the great moments that it has to offer. Once again, 8.5 out of 10. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Stay tuned for my spoiler-filled review in the next video. As always, if you enjoyed this review, hit the like button, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, The Rage Nation. Also, follow me on Twitter, at Rage Nation. My name is Alex Yu. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace. He does stretch, and he's going to keep his physical stretching abilities, and you don't have to worry about it, okay? Now, I understand why the fans uh, were, were up in arms about this.